Hey, hey, t- hey, Terry. Yes, Adam. Can we start yet? Can we start yet? Can we start yet, Terry? Hey, Terry, can we start yet? Can we start? Can we start yet, Terry? Can we start yet? Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Almost Sideshow, everybody. My name is Adam, and that is Terry. We are back again with another episode of the Sideshow where we're breaking down Breaking Bad. Break down a Breaking Bad. Boom. All right. I'm really excited to dive into this fifth episode of season four called Shotgun. What's going Shotgun. on? Shotgun. Yeah. How are you doing, man? Welcome doing back. good. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be good. That you, that you feel like some things change in this episode that you don't necessarily expect. And, mm-hmm. uh, and some, some twists get thrown in that, uh, that just kind of, yeah, kind of throw a little kinks into some things. I like it. I like it. Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely been uh, it was a different tra- trajectory. The episode took a little, went to different spots. I didn't quite expect it to go, but actually in all the best ways. I think this was actually a thoroughly entertaining episode. And that ending, um, in honor of uh, Walter... We're gonna get white girl wasted on a Wednesday while we record. I got my wine. I don't usually don't do wine, but uh, if Walter can slosh it through an episode, uh, I can definitely do so as well. So prepare yourself. Don't drink and confess now. No, I think this. Ep- I think our podcast has slowly just become like a a roto copy of another podcast. I'm pretty sure some Breaking Bad. Bad. Yeah, roto cop. Wait, what? That's wrong. But whatever. We already passed it. We keep going. We don't. We Let's never look into it. Let's this do this. Bad. All right. Here's the synopsis for Breaking Bad season four, episode five. It is entitled "Shotgun." Yes. Let's go. Jesse is missing, and Walt is freaking out. He's telling Saul to watch his money, saying goodbye to his family, and taking his gun into Pollo's Hermanos. That's when he hears from Jesse. He's with Mike for the day, making pickups and standing guard. No, that's not a joke. He even saves the day when someone tries to rob them, even if it was orchestrated so he could save the day. In the meantime, Walt is struggling to run the lab by himself, so Tyrus has to help him. He's also signing papers on the car wash, which leads to an unexpected trip to the bedroom. And Walt moving back in? When Jesse returns to the lab, he tells Wald he has two jobs now, lab assistant and Mike assistant. Hank hands over all he has uh, and feels closure on the Heisenberg case. That is until Walt is drunk and tells him Gail isn't his guy and he needs to keep looking. Dumb. So he does and begins wondering why an all-organic vegan dude has a Fried chicken wrapper in his house. Done, done, done. Well, all right. Well, the most like we talked about this several times. Walt gets in his freaking way a lot, and he may be quite possibly the Walter White dumbest thing said in the episode. Uh, he man, man, he definitely gets in his way a lot more, and he is becoming a fascinating character, but also really frustrating at the same time. Like that whole indie, when he starts, starts talking, I was like, is he really this upset? Because he told uh, Walter Ju- or she told Walter jr. That he was going to move in on Tuesday. I get that. Like, he was expecting it to be now, but this, you have to make it somewhat believable, I guess. And so it's like being like a kind of a, kind of a, I don't know, upset, frustrated, I guess. And then he gets like drunk at their brother-in-law, his, like this little get together. And then basically says, yeah, yeah, he hits a copy. And guess what gets in the way again? Walter's pride again. His pride gets in the way. Mm-hmm. His ego Every and his pride. Time. And Skylar is like, you fudging moron. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, and she totally knows what he's doing too. He's she like, totally knows. Way to get Dude, back together with her and sleep on the what? couch the same day. Like, what are you ch- doing? 
Yeah. Oh, wow. It, it, I couldn't believe it. And then it's like, then you get him, Hank, and this, it was, this is going to jump into the very end because this is, this is definitely what we need to talk about. Hank is going to find that chicken wrapper. And guess what? That means he's going to be knocking on Gus Fring's door. And that ain't going to be good news for Hank. I, I like that. That's it's only going to be, you, you can only basically knock it on heaven's door at that point. Like that, that can't be good. Once somebody, you basically walked Hank to somebody that he shouldn't be investigating in the first place. You had it like him off your back. The Heisenberg storyline for him was over. It was curtains. It was great. And then he had to open his mouth. And now I, I don't know what happens. I just know it. it it's oh, it's gonna be exhilarating. I, and I was like, oh my god. I had I I usually sit here in the same spot and watch the show, take my notes. I stood up and watched the last five minutes. I was like, oh my god. I was like, come on, Walter. I had my hand. I, I looked like I was freaking watching my team like almost blow a, blow a lead in a playoff game. I was like, my hand was on my head. I was like, oh god, please don't do this. Like I was like, oh my goodness. It was. It wasn't great. even blowing the lead. It, it was you dropped the pop fly to win the World Series. I mean, uh, the, it's the ball goes between Buckner. That's that's what yeah, happened. That's pretty much what happened. Yeah, it was over. Like they were about to shut the Heisenberg case. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this happens. Yeah, it, like you said, his ego, his pride, he can't get away from it. As soon as he starts putting all these compliments, Hank starts putting all these compliments on Gail and saying how great Gail is. He's a genius and all the good he could do and if, if how many geniuses do we actually have and he can't help it. I'm not going to let you praise someone who's not me like that. Yeah. Not, uh, not awesome. Not awesome. And it sucks because it's like Again, they don't necessarily know what he's talking. He's talking on a whole different plane of conversation, but Skyler's on the same plane, on the same level as Walter. And at Walter's like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> uh, Heisen chump. That's what he became in that episode. <laughs> like, what a dummy. Oh. Yeah. But at the same time, that's what it made that makes this show so good is because if it was just like, like this is, they're pretty cut. Cut. There's a lot of different twists and turns the show takes. And that's why it makes this the show so good, and why Walter is such a good, fascinating character because you know he wants the best, but he just has that thing a little pride and ego. He can't just let it good be good enough because that's why he's he's not a criminal. Yeah, he's a he's technically not he's doing bad things, yes, but at the same time he's that's not how how he's wired. He's not like that's a criminal mindset. He has that like I, I'm a kind of a genius, and I can't mm -hmm. just like lay low that's why gus is so good because he can you know compartment compartment up he can compartmentalize geez i don't well cut the wine off i guess uh but anyway he can do that and, and not you know get his emotions in the way at least that's comparing gus to walt there but yeah it's oh my god the last five minutes this was this was awesome now at the same time you have on the other side jesse who mm -hmm. has zero pride and zero ego and he gets a little boost right i mean we ended yeah, last episode thinking him. he was getting driven off to his death and no he's getting driven off to a purpose i i, I it's like it, yeah it's interesting to like see the game gus is playing here and try to understand it because he he wanted him to feel some sense of purpose because I mean, I don't know. Is it is it just to if he's got to use him, he might as well have a ha, have some some uh, purpose or be useful at the same time. Mm -hmm. Is it is it let's let's try and uh, and use Jesse and get him feeling good about what he's doing, so he doesn't think I'm the enemy anymore. And now he's working against Walt too. I mean, mm -hmm. there there's a whole lot of games that could be playing here, mm -hmm. um, and uh, but. Gus is definitely taking Jesse and using him as a pawn in this game. And yeah, the definitely. first step was getting him back in the game. And mm -hmm. you get the idea that he is, right? He's got a purpose now. He's got a sense of, of duty. He's He has some, some ego uh, back in him. 
he's got some some pride back in him and uh yeah it, it worked i mean it may like i said it may have been orchestrated but it worked mm-hmm. and uh, and it's greatest i'm crossing my heart walter that's the great crossing great, my, my heart walter yeah. and, and, and what it's great about like the the game that gus is playing i have so many questions of course i'm not going to ask him right now but uh, it, it's just it brings up so many good questions, and I I I love the game that Gus is uh, is playing. And Walt, uh, you know, Mike doesn't agree with it, and he's a, he's gonna get reimbursed for the car, the vehicle. So I mean, that was Gus's like buddy or something, or not Gus's buddy, but Mike's buddy or something. And he's like, yeah, you're the kid's a hero. Yeah, I, I, Mike's just like great. you wanted. Yeah, just like you want. Yeah. He's, he reminds me his like how he talks. It reminds me of Eeyore from <laughs> Winnie the Pooh, just like that. Really, just like, like you wanted. He is a hero, just like you wanted. But yeah, it, it, it's awesome. I like I like seeing the different games that are people are playing and just can't get it. Yeah. Anyway, you have any questions? Like, more than a few. More than a few. But I know not to ask them. I know. <laughs> That, that's also a really underrated line. Of, it's like, a great line, yeah. yeah. And that is why Mike is still around. <laughs> He's like, he just, I, I know, unlike Walter, he knows when to shut up. Like, that's mm-hmm. the thing. All right. Well, let's talk about best scene. Uh, I have two written first. down, and they're Go kind first. of the two that we have talked about, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's Drunk Walt, and it's uh, Hero Jesse. Like, those, I think, are the two, are the two best scenes uh, where we see... We see Walt spill the beans at the end. And I don't know, every, everything with Jesse and Mike, I really like. Uh, everything no, it from... Not. It was definitely different, too. It was, it was a different, good change of pace mm-hmm. how it was shot. Yeah, e- everything from just their initial conversation to him realizing what's going on, keys in hand, ready to attack, and uh, hit, he walks him past standing him guard, seven. Mike pulling over and telling him off, you're not the guy. You're not even capable of being the guy. I had a guy. Now I don't. <laughs> uh, who happens to be a person of interest in uh, the murder of Gail Bedecker. Um But yeah, all of that is is great. I love watching watching Walt or not Walt, Mike and Jesse interact. Like it it is the odd couple to the extreme, and it kind of works. Yeah. <laughs> Good call. All right. So we mentioned two scenes. We've been kind of talked about it. We, your scene that you just mentioned is also really awesome. I'm going to go with uh, Walt in Las Polos Romanos uh, with Cynthia. My girl Cynthia is back. Hey. She's, just, she's just good at her job, man. She's just a class act. Really good at her job. Very professional. I like the tension that the, the, the scene does build because – you know, Walt is just like on the edge of his seat. You think you're going to see Gus, but Gus ain't there, even though we know his car is outside. Um, I, I really liked that that the scene and the setup. That, like this again, you have that that one SUV pulls up with a bunch of guys coming out, and you think that's going to be the guys that tell him off, but no, it's not. You got the uh, he has that uh, you know reluctance with the, the security camera, so you think the cameras are all focused on on Walter there too. So what are you doing, Walter? Walter? Yeah, what do you? And then you get the phone call from Jesse and Mike, and that it's awesome. And then he goes barges through the off, you know, his uh, Gus's office, and obviously not there. And yeah, Cynthia just really good at her job. So yeah, that's definitely not like one of the best. It's, it's a good, a good, good scene. Not necessarily like a one of the best scenes of the show or the season, but it's still it's how it's put together is really good. So I will at least mention that. Nice. Yep. Cool. The Ken mm-hmm. wins. Bogdan, douchebag award goes to i got two here <sighs> binicky <laughs> freaking binicky you outstage uh, your at this point buddy you take that coffee mug and get the hell out of here i'm talking with ted it's a ted talk <laughs> it's the ted talk back to the ted talk yeah definitely binicky but um, do you have any ones for quick? Before I, I do. I, Go I've got I've got Walter Jr. down. Um, I mean, one walking in and the disgust of knowing that his parents are naked in their bedroom. Um, it, it, it's, I mean, that's just a great moment. But also then, yeah, the moment of uh, 
I'll, I'll take some coffee. Like, you drink coffee now? Yeah, and I can tie my shoes all by myself. It's like, you want some cream or sugar? No, just black. Like, yeah, <laughs> Damn, whatever, man. dude. Yeah. Like, what kind of car am I going to get? <laughs> Squeaky wheel gets it gets it or whatever he, he's i mean he just he's just a cocky arrogant yeah the new teenager. car wash can wa- wash uncle hank <laughs> <laughs> we can wheel him in uh yeah he Not is just one. a cocky teenager in this one and he yeah. he earns it not saying it's necessarily a bad thing but he earns he earns the the, the bogdan award here all right i get that uh my Bogged on winner is Ultra Wash. I'm trying to poach, man. I'm trying to poach. It's mm, a good point. Good point. Yeah. The Pink Man Stick Man Award. Was it Walter? Walter White? Back at it again. I, I said panicked Walter. Because it was his his panicked, heartfelt message that ju- along with the fact like that that Skyler is like riding the high of uh, just buying a car wash. Good call. That, uh, yeah. I, I'm so I'm gonna say the Stickman Award goes to spending a lot of money. Being like nothing the, exhilarates you quite like the, signing those yeah. papers, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. All right, like what do it. you got? Oh, that was Walter White. Yeah, it was just Walter, Walter White. Yeah, okay. Walter White. Yeah, the best new face. Hey, that's Danny Trejo. It's a tough one. Um, the only new character really is the notary, but I couldn't picture anything that he's been in. I couldn't either. But that's the only However, new face, really. Yeah, that is that is the only new face. Um, one of the guys, like the first guy to hop out of the SUV when it pulls up at Pollos Hermanos, kind of looks like Clifton Collins Jr. Um, that so that was like that, or it was like a mix between Clifton Collins Jr. and Mark Anthony, something like that. Oh, but Mark. uh, yeah. So there was that. But the what I wrote down was Fu Manchu guy at the at, oh. at Buenos Hermanos, well, like well, like it was, yeah. He's he's so paranoid, and he's just kind of looking around. He's like <laughs> security camera, security camera, Fu Manchu. Fu Manchu reading the newspaper, and like, what do you think he's a spy? I mean, what are you? <laughs> <laughs> or are you just are you just noticing that there would be witnesses to whatever you do? Probably. But, yeah, I mean, he's yeah. just like this this big dude sitting there eating his chicken, reading his newspaper. Hi, Walter. I got diabetes. Anyway, um, yeah, that's a that's a great one. I like that call. That's a that's a good one. I love like, that guy. We'll never see again. We'll never see him again. But he just has that one little look. He's like, "What well, can I help you with something?" I'm just reading the paper. He's got a look. He's got a sports section. It's a classified. Mm -hmm. I like it. All right. The Gomi minor character. Speaking of Gomi, have we seen Gomi this season? I don't think we've seen him yet this season. He's been name dropped, but that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because he told told Tim to go to Steve Gomez with the the stuff. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Your Gomi minor character of this episode. Let's go with Cynthia. Got to go with Cynthia. Great manager. Really knows her stuff. Almost had to be aggressive with Walter, but at the same time, yeah, she's in charge of that place. That's her restaurant. So Tyrus, Tyrus oh, is mine. Even, even better, yeah. That's he, a good call. He just walks in. He gives Walter that look. Like, I don't do the forklift. Jesse does the forklift. I. This is a two man job. <laughs> what, what are you? Are you even listening to me? It's a, definitely a funny. Like, it's it's a funny callback that uh, to the forklift thing because like when Walter and Jesse were first stealing that barrel, they rolled it kind of like how it rolled off the thing, and it's like all they had to do was lift it up, and that yeah, it's completely like the opposite of what what happened here. It was like I was like ah, oh, it, it, it kind of popped in my head like that's kind of funny. Anything with mm-hmm. barrels, he's like roll it, dummy. Uh, just, but just goes and picks it up. All right, where do you want it? I mean, yeah. he he's just Tyrus. Where um what was it Victor? Or Victor was like this, like mean and brooding thing. Tyrus just feels cool, yeah. Right? He's he, like cool. he's like, I, I, I'm just gonna like slide in here, and look at you like the idiot you are, and make you feel like an idiot because I am definitely cooler than you. He's the coolest guy in the room, and he knows it. 
Exactly, exactly. And I love that about Tyrus. All right, the cow house dumbest thing said. I still think, like, all time for the whole show so far, the dumbest thing said is cow house. You know, the house for the cows. Yeah, that's like, pretty dumb. That's, yeah, that's that, I think that might still be the dumbest thing, so I think we named it right in that first episode. Mm -hmm. What do you got? Well... Uh, the dark anal recesses of the state. It's pretty. It's 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 a great line, honestly. <laughs> uh, but I, I, what I had was almost went with my stickman character. But it's Scarface had Scarface had sex with Mister Rogers. I was like, oh, that's that's definitely pretty dumb. <laughs> it's a dumb analogy. And then he also he he calls back. What is the, what was the thing? I'm going over to the website here. I saw it. Uh, Hank goes back to his old ways and calls back a scene from the first episode. I've got your wipe down right here. And he grabs uh, grabs his crotch, and Marie's oh, like, hey. Uh, hey, stop. Yeah, he does the, the grab the crotch thing. Jumps again. Can we have one meal where you don't grab your crotch? <laughs> <laughs> I got your wipe down right here. Wipe down right here. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, I had I had got your wipe down right here. I had that written down. Um, Squeaky and greasy. Mm, yeah, good one. Like that's how I describe you, squeaky and greasy. Or uh no, we wanna we wanna attract customers, not scare them away. Uh, <laughs> no, that was pretty good. But I mean, if you really want to go with it, fallacies. Fall oh. Like when when he is bored, what does he go back to? He goes back to Twat Hammer and fallacies. Thalases, thalases. Uh, yeah. yes. I just came. I came up with that name off the top of my head too. It was. It was just there. I don't know what? how. Yeah, it's a good. It's a good name for your fantasy football team this upcoming year. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. Maybe maybe you start doing uh, Breaking Bad references. Your, uh, fantasy wow, but I, I like my Home Alone though. But anyway, it is a good point. But, it is a good yeah, one. It's a good one. But anyway, um, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, Phallus, Phallus. man, that yes. let's go back into that the whole like buddy cop. Like, I would love to see a road trip movie with Jesse and Mike, but because that that was just like it's just shot so differently. And like, he, he's definitely a kid, and the, the Mike's the grumpy old dad. <laughs> he's like, Do I need to pull this thing over? Stop it. <laughs> like, it's great. I love that scene. It's a great scene. It's great. All right. Problems, outdated. Um, well, random so observations. I've been going on the the Breaking Bad wiki and to get, like mm -hmm. as after the episode, so I can get like the the air date and kind of just go over again like all the points and if they mention people's names, that's how I've been kind of fo also following. And I read on on the wiki that there's a poster in and the chicken uh, El Spolos Hermanos that said best burrito. Uh, 2010 right but supposedly the timelines takes place in 2009 is that do we have any reference point like when when is this actually airing like it airs in 2011 but is, is does it take place in 2009 when does it actually take well, place well, i think like we said last week it's coming i know but everything yeah everything so far i think has been under a year okay so technically it's still 2009 so, but I don't know. Maybe it's something like it's projecting ahead. This is going to be the, the best one. Or, I said, like, I've seen stuff like that where, like, if you give something at the end of the year, you're giving it for the next year. Mm, true. That's a good point. I, I guess I don't know. I can see. But that's that's the only thing I really had. But for flaws, my wife had one. Ooh. Actually. All right. So, this is a direct quote that haircut's awful. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna mention something about that. <laughs> yeah, that haircut. <laughs> that haircut. However, off. however, it was it had some stickman prowess because. Uh, yeah. Stay out of it. Uh, funny thing that also happened shortly after that. Um, we were watching the scene, and she hits the uh, the answering machine, and our lights like, "Hey, uh, we should turn it up real quick." Like turn it, like turn it up, because it was we had it down kind of medium temperature. <laughs> I tried to turn it up, and all of a sudden they're going. And then a little boom, boom. And then I was like, it was like, no, turn it down, turn it down, turn it down. 
Oh, it was great. It, it was a, it's a fun moment. A uh, little no. boom boom. <laughs> a little boom boom. It's a midlife crisis thing too. Uh, <laughs> don't uh, the only uh, thing I had, the only thing I had was, okay. I I know everything needs to be purple, but where the hell did she find a purple bottle opener? Oh yeah, like, good call. The bottle opener's purple. I mean, what? That's nuts. That's crazy. Uh, what's that? What's that? I don't know what that thing's called. Wish Wish dot com. That's where she found it. Uh, yeah. but yeah, maybe not in two thousand nine. Whatever. This takes midlife place. crisis moment. I think uh, you're only as good as you ever. You you're as good as you are now than you ever were. I don't know. No, it's that Toby Keith song. As good once as I ever was. I don't know. So things don't. I don't know. Never mind. We're going back to the, the boom boom scene. But no, I don't really. I didn't have anything down here, so I was coming up to me on the fly, and then you said a little boom boom. I was like, oh wait a second. Yeah. Okay. The Toby Keith song. He's like he, he's not like, boom boom boom. He's not he's boom, not like boom. yeah he's not the young stallion he used to be, but he he can at least get the job done. That's that that's maybe that, that's mm. the best way to phrase that. So he can see well, and, and he, he always hands. this whole show he gets frisky when things get wild, right? Like whenever when everything and and it the, the thrill of you know spending money. He just thought he was gonna die. I, it, it all kind of kind of leads into it. The that, door was open apparently. The door was open. Like what? And where's the baby? Home. Where's the baby? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> the baby, yeah, convenient. Was never seen in any of those scenes. But the, oh. Walter did walk past the bedroom door and smiled. So one of the bedroom doors when he's coming out for breakfast, he looks over to the thing and kind of like stops and smiles. And that's not Walter Jr.'s room. So I'm, I'm assuming could be the baby in there somewhere. Maybe I don't know. Mm. Not great parenting, but anyway. All right. My my midlife crisis moment is. I I had to write down that your your who's the the manager, um, Cynthia. Cynthia. I had to write down that she offered Walt the breakfast chalupa combo meal because that sounded delicious. Like he did. Yes, please do read me the specials at the fast food joint. Oh, you get you get hot sauce with that. <laughs> a breakfast chalupa. I mean, mm. when's Taco Bell gonna gonna get all over that? Yeah, no. I'd eat it. They got hash browns now. Uh, no, that yeah, that's a good that's a good call. I would probably eat that too. That sounds mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, yep, it's awful. That's great. It's a good line. <laughs> My wife has the best line of the episode. The haircut's awful. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> oh, the other, the other one too. The other one too is, uh, is the uh, the post boom boom discussions. Oh the sheet, yeah, the sheets smell different. <laughs> like, like oh, that's fabric softener. Oh, that's no okay. new fabric softener. <laughs> oh almost... yeah, that's not the only thing. It's different. Uh, did you notice the hair? Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Yeah, actually, that was that was, I hadn't wrote that actually down yet. The fabric softener is the fabric softener game has to be on point. You have to go for the different, the, the, the same smell. You care much more about fabric softener than you would like to admit when you get older. So that's that's sure. that's sure. something, yeah. Things like that matter. It does. Okay, LVP of the episode. Oh, easily Walt's pride. Just Walt in general. Not only yeah. is pride, he can't run the. Run the uh, oh, cliff. oh my goodness! What a what a sad run the lab. Display. Like he he there he there's stuff he just doesn't know how to do. He's out of breath too half the time. He's like. completely out of breath, and then and then he shows up like the next morning, and Jesse's in there, like cr cracking. Like did Jesse do a whole cook by himself, or or is he just finishing up the cook from the night before? I, I don't I don't know the the timeline of how all this stuff takes, but yeah, but yeah, I think Jesse could run the lab by himself better than Walt can at this point. So it's not only Walt's pride, but like Walt's just ability to operate as an independent person. So that he's a he's a midlife crisis moment. Oh, that he he is he is a living, walking, breathing midlife crisis. This okay. whole show, 
This show could be retitled Walter White's Midlife Crisis. That's a good call. Mm -hmm. All right. right. MVP. Gus. Gus. I had it too. It's got to be Gus. Uh, Mastermind. I I had a feeling that it kind of was set up. Like when you get into that moment, it's like, wait, that is kind of convenient. The very last drop, there's somebody that does show up. I'm like, this is going to be like a staged thing. But I'm like, nah, it. And then when you actually it is revealed, it's like, okay, Gus is too damn smart. Like this, that's just crazy. But it's uh, cool to see that Jesse gets a new job and gets out of his uh, his hobo house. House. When when Jesse stops singing fallacies long enough to actually notice that a guy's walking up in a shotgun, like, yeah. How close uh, did he have to get? Yeah. Well, you got what you wanted. The kid's a hero. <laughs> It's good. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah, guys, if you're going to go with anybody else, I'm going Hank here. Like we've been crapping on Hank all season. And I, and yeah, Walt stuck his foot in his mouth in a royally massive way. Mm-hmm. But but it, that sticking his foot in his mouth woke up Hank. Mm-hmm. And for the first time, he wants to be out of the room. He's at the, the dining room table. He is working a case and he's acting like a normal human being again. And not being a dick to Marie, which is awesome. And figuring it out. Yeah. Like like hit like even before. He's like, Well, I guess that's it. I, I don't know. But now it's like, I'm gonna look at this with my with my, you know, paint glasses on, and I'm gonna notice, oh. Why is there a chicken wrapper in the vegan's house? Mm-hmm. I like so. it. That's a good call. All right. We're going to talk call. about what's coming up next. There's a lot of theories we could get into with this oh, after gosh. what just happened. But first, I mean, the the counts are, are, are kind of boring right now. The Walter White body count remains at one Emilio, one Crazy Eight, one Car. One custodian's career, one Tuco hideout, one lock, one uneaten burrito, one paper towel holder, rot, one back door to Jesse's house, one love of Jesse's life, a few burned hundred dollar bills of pepperoni pizza, one career in education, one meth making RV, one beginning of a gay awful friendship, one fly, two kid killing drug dealers, and one Gail Bedecker making the actual body count at five. You need it, but flaw how, how he opened the bottle of wine. But you should probably put a bottle of wine in there too. He did. Oh, I like it because one bottle of wine. But how he opened it with that knife first, I'm like, oh god, he's gonna cut his finger off. That's what I thought of. I was like, oh god, drunken one wolf. fateful bottle of wine. That's what I'm putting down. Yeah, fate, one yeah, fateful it's... bottle of wine. And the Jesse ass kick count remains at eight, which means he gets his ass kicked once every 4.75 episodes now. Man, it, seemed, it definitely seems so long ago. He hasn't gotten his, he hasn't gotten his ass kicked since Hank showed up on his doorstep. Mm, yeah, Call my, how would you get my number? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. All right, what's happening next? All right, so Hank's walking. Um, Hank's gonna walk. I don't. I don't think he's gonna be on his little uh, scooter. I can't remember what uh, Saul said, but what scooter kind of scooter it was. But I don't know something insensitive. Yes, <laughs> something insensitive. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. So he, he's gonna be walking. Uh, I, it'd be awesome if he goes and orders some chicken because he knows Gus. He knows of Gus. So that, that could be something there. Did you notice that uh, when Tim came over, he was wearing his ABQ Fun Run shirt? Yeah, that, the Fun Run. Yeah, that that Gus helped sponsor. Yeah, I, I didn't put the ties together, but I didn't. I knew it was the Fun Run short shirt. But yeah, that's a it's a good call there. Um, so obviously, we're gonna see some kind of meetup with Hank and Gus. That would be really interesting to see if they actually start pushing it so like quickly. Um, and then Walt and Skyler are going to have an argument, um, and I, I, I'm going to call it. I think Walter is going to spend some time on the couch because he's not going to be quietly 
that that's a pretty big slip up you did, especially when no one's supposed to know. You, you and you had the perfect out. It's pretty uh, pretty bad. I think Jesse is going to get. You know, Jesse and Mike are going to probably bond a little bit because they're working together now. And uh, yeah, Walt is going to. He's just not. He's not cool without this Heisenberg hat. I, that's the. Th that's the thing. I, I thought. You know. Yeah, I, I think that. By the way, the whole thing, him going into that, like the restaurant and saying Walter White for or, or Gus for Walter or you know whatever <laughs> Walter Weiss for Gus. That's a pretty dumb thing to do. Like now you have all those witnesses hear your name, and you're aggressive and you barge through the restaurant. He was filled with dumb things this episode. Like yeah, it was an episode of dumb things. But anyway, the, it, there, I, there's a lot of stuff I can see, and I don't want to like. You could go the whole trail where, like, now Gus, there's a tie-in with Gus now, and the loose string was Gale and was Victor, but now, you know, we have now they have the the DA or the DEA are poking around his restaurant. We don't, you know, they, there might be a loose in there. We got to see Gomi at some point because now we're on the trail of the I, actual Heisenberg. Now he's out there. Um, so I'm thinking Gomi has to come back and work side by side with uh, Hank. I would love to see that. So uh, there's a lot of different things we could see. I, I just, I don't want to see one of the, the better characters, you know, uh, you know, suffer any more than he's already suffered. That's, that's the hard part. I, I love Hank a lot. Dean Morris is awesome in this, as this, this character, but I'm glad just to see him out of the, I want to see, I can't, I'm going to be so excited when you see him outside the wheelchair, because that little moment with him and Marie at the very end was such a touching <laughs> thing. Cause even our, my wife was like saying like, Oh, he's not being a dick. That's awesome. <laughs> he's, like, mm -hmm. he's like, yeah, you know, I would love some coffee. Thank you. Like that, that that's 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 like little things, and her little smile was was awesome too. So seeing that, so more of that, please. Yeah, yeah. That I, you're you're gonna you you have to get more of Hank at this point as he continues to poke around. Uh, I think it's interesting. Like we talked about, there's so many dumb things that Walt did in this episode, and you're seeing the dichotomy between him and Gus, where Gus is everything is calculated. And everything, everything has a purpose in what he does. Where Walt still has, he wants to be calculated, but he has this gear where he he lets his emotions like run rampant. Mm -hmm. And you you get this moment here where, you know, he's flying off the rails. He goes running into Pueblo Hermano, screaming his name with a gun in his pocket. And then at the end, he gets drunk and he can't let it go and has to tell everyone that Gail's not the genius because he's the actual genius and he can't let anyone take credit for his work. I, he He's letting his emotions get the better of him while he's going up against a guy who is emotionless. Mm -hmm. Right? Like he, we saw in the first episode with the box cutter. He is emotionless in everything he does. And so how's that going to play out? Where does Jesse go from I mean, is is he gonna? Uh, what direction do we see? Is he just gonna kind of settle back into normal? Like you said, are are he and Mike gonna start to bond? If he and Mike start to bond, what's get what's Walt gonna think of that? Uh, is is that the whole point that he and Jesse start to bond? Um, it, who knows where that goes? Um, They're going to the jealousy route too, because all of a sudden now he's not the they like now that even. The boss likes Jesse, and even when he didn't like him before, now he's given Jesse the extra task. But I'm now I'm just stuck here in the lab. You know, I'm not mm -hmm. seeing the bigger picture of the thing. There could be a, they could go down some several jealousy things because at the end of the day, it is right now you're you have Hank or not Hank, but uh, you have Heisenberg, Walter White, you know, as the, the his drug dealer type of self or drug creator and technically up against Gus. Gus is the, the main big kind of foe here, but it's just it's, it's, as soon as uh, Walter learns not to uh, put himself in the way and not be his own worst enemy, I think he's going to realize that, yeah, Gus is the bigger threat here. Gus is the one that he has. You're under his thumb. It's not the other way around. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he's trying to turn the tides, but it's nothing's getting there yet. 
Yeah, you have your, um, you have your own ego and pride in the way. You have to put that aside. Now that the papers are signed on the car wash, where's that gonna go? It's a good point. Uh, so you, you've got you've got stuff that could be happening with that. I mean, there's just so many things that this one episode opened up. Like, like what's going on with Jesse? Where is Hank gonna go? What's Walt gonna do next? What's Gus gonna do next? What's gonna happen with the car wash? Uh, the all those things got opened up this episode. Because just so many, so many things just like popped open. Mm -hmm. it, it's gonna be, it, it, it's gonna be interesting to watch where where it goes from here. Yeah, I, I can't, I'm looking forward to uh, the scene where it goes because it, there's the, get so many possibilities. That's that's the best part about it. And this is only episode five of the season. We've still got eight more to go. Yes, I love it. I love these longer seasons now, but it just sucks because the I have to wait till next week to watch the episode. Darn yes, it. you do. Yes, you do. All right. Well, we're going to wrap it up right there. Next week, we will be back breaking it down, breaking down that Breaking Bad. Breakdown of Breaking Bad. And we'll be asking more tough questions like, where does Hank go next? Is he going to encounter Gus? And will Huel ever overcome his intestinal problems we may answer that next week who knows but till next time we will do one what terry sit and spin boom <laughs>